This is Base Camp Climbing in Toronto, Ontario. First fun thing about it, it's built in an old adult movie theater from the 1930s. Uh, but my favorite part about this gym is its ability to put a lot of service inside a really small footprint. Uh, this is the entranceway, this is right inside the front doors. Not much of a lobby, just a front desk, some waivers on the left side, lots of people, and at this gym lots of dogs too. All just trying to cram it in so everybody can climb. Directly on top of the entrance is their bouldering area and this looks out over their climbing walls and you can see at the very back on the left hand side of the screen some uh, some walls and that's the very end of the gym. That's all the space they have to work with here. It does mean for some fairly tight quarters. The gym is basically separated into two separate lanes of climbing. This is the lane that involves the auto belays and the more vert walls and the slab walls so it's always popular and it's always pretty much back to back with the belayers especially at peak times uh, but it's an excellent example of just using space efficiently and getting a lot of climbs into a small floor plan. This is the lead prow. When you walk in from that lobby this is the first thing you're greeted by. On the left is that alley that we just saw, and then on the right is the other side, which has the steeper terrain, lots of lead climbing, and then a very limited amount of open space, which gets used for seating and training equipment, coat storage, personal bags, a couple couches, some small retail. But this is as close as it gets to open space in this facility, and they're using every inch of it. I'm a big fan of this lead terrain. For a gym with such a small floor plan, it does have some really high walls, especially considering that Toronto doesn't have a, a lot of gyms with really tall rope walls. I think this gym gets up to probably about 37 or 38 feet uh, at its high points. And the height of the walls does change, as you can kind of see here, based on, uh, on where the walls are within the trusses. So there are really just a few points that are super high. But again, back to the lobby, on one side is the desk and on the other side you've got your waivers and you see a lot of people keeping their boots in this area. Price lists, some really cool art from, uh, from members put up on the wall as well. Kind of different stereotypes of, uh, of base camp climbers, I really like that idea. And behind the desk, keeping everything from their harnesses to their rental shoes, all in this really small space. There's really no storage closets in this gym and you can also make out some uh, some uh, free uh, sandals there to give out to members. Pretty simple price list. This is a really prime location that sees a lot of day traffic, so their prices are relatively high compared to other gyms in Toronto, but they are right on a subway in a very busy tourist-friendly area and also surrounded by residential uh, areas right just, you know, right around the corner surrounding them, so it's, uh, it's a very popular gym with a, a really booming neighborhood. As the camera pans here, you start to see some of the more beginner climbs. On the right there, you can see where they teach their lessons. And in this sweep, you see this window. It was under renovation as, uh, as I was filming, but through that window is a little cafe in the same building. Uh, it was previously occupied by a kind of like a climbing-themed coffee shop. I'm not sure what it's become now, uh, but, uh, but those tenants did end up moving out. And you can see more of this, this really small area trying to fit as much storage space in as possible. It's an Ontario gym so of course every top rope's already got a Grigri and a locking beaner attached to it. That's just how it goes around here. And I appreciate a gym with comprehensive rules and guidelines. That's just something that I really respect from a management team. And also a really interesting and, and uh, solid framework about their uh, belaying harnesses and tags and then these are their root tags big simple it's easy to see the information you want to see they have i think five or six auto belays in this gym and one of them is a backfill auto belay which i really like the idea of they put up a lot of their hrt uh, green stuff up on there and it's a fun thing to warm up on and a fun thing to kind of you know if the other ones are busy with kids it gives you something to project lets you create your own climbs or warm up the way you want And again, 
seeing more of this uh, this small space. They've managed to bring in the most popular hangboards, I think. The Beastmakers and the... What are those called? The Factor... Ah, I, I, yeah, anyway. You, you know the uh, you know the hangboards. Kind of cool light-up display by the bouldering area. Now, this gym was opened in uh, 2016. Uh, but the bouldering wall wasn't put in until just the summer of 2018. This area previously was used for, for birthday parties and programming. I think they had some aerial silks and rings and stuff hanging down, but they finally decided to put in bouldering. So for two years, this was really a rope-only gym. Uh, the, the first walls, the rope walls, are built by Waltopia. Uh, the bouldering area was built by Onsite. And again, just trying to fit in as much climbing as possible in a really small floor space. And this is one of those gyms where they put a lot of man hours into root setting, just because that's the only way to really keep it fresh when you have only so much terrain. So you'll always see new stuff in this facility. And when you do have a small, uh, relatively small facility, it's it's kind of that, that sacrifice you have to make. You have to spend extra on the man hours if you want to keep people coming in those three or four or five times each week. And for such a small boulder wall, which is really just like kind of a I don't know, my, my, my distance estimation is really bad, but I'd say it's approximately, you know, 15 feet by, by 20 feet. Could be way off. But for such a small wall, the angles are really good. Up just beside the bouldering area is this little closet, and this is the de facto staff room, manager's office. This is where everything gets stored by all other staff, everybody's personal equipment. Um, a lot of the, the gym stuff, the manager here is working on his laptop. They've got the microwave in here. And then behind the bouldering walls, this is where they keep all of their root setting gear. And for such a small alleyway space, they've done a good job going for the Tupperware approach. Which is nice because it requires generally less construction, but Tupperware can break down over time. A really nice gear corner. I respect this space a lot. I love those drill holders. I think that's the first time I've seen that construction for uh, holding your guns. And all the root setter stuff in any space they can find. Note that to get all this, all these holds down from the uh, from the root setting area, which is again on the second floor, it does have to be either carried down a set of stairs, or lowered, uh, basically by winch over the uh, balcony. And those stairs that get you up to the bouldering area, they've done this really cool uh, mural, climbing themed, Toronto themed. It's just a fun thing to look at as you're. Uh, walking from the from the ground floor to the top floor. Well, if you ever do get a chance to visit, a unique challenge of this place is that as you walk in the front door, you don't necessarily have to walk past the check-in counter to get to the bouldering area, which for myself, I think I would find really difficult managing a facility. It does kind of add some challenges to controlling traffic. And wall-wise, uh, this Waltopia wall does use those proprietary Waltopia uh, bolt hangers for lead climbing. Um, Waltopia usually makes their hangers integrate straight into the superstructure, but these particular hangers don't use uh, your typical hanger. It's kind of a, a little um, a little closed thing that's that's not meant to be like um, like a bolted in or out. It's not something that really needs to be tightened from the outside, but it also limits how versatile it is. It's not something you could really clip an ohm through or add extra gear. And anyway, regular speed now. A look out across the entire gym. A really small space with some of my favorite climbing in Toronto, especially their like 40 foot lead slab. <laughs> There's not a lot of that in the city. So uh, yeah, base camp climbing, nice place. In, uh, in downtown Toronto, easy to get to, bright space, really friendly people.
If you're ever in the area and you want to say you climbed in an adult film facility, then uh, make sure you stop by and check it out.